Hey guys, it's Ross, and in today's video, we're going to be graphing persimmons. I'm going to do a nice little demo for you guys, and also talk about the finer points that I find to be really important. Um, that kind of separates grafting persimmons from other fruit trees. And uh, what you're looking at right here is actually some persimmon seedlings that are about one year old. We got these in the mail. We up-potted them and actually grafted onto a number of these using the cleft graft. I definitely recommend the cleft graft um, on these younger trees. And persimmons, grafting them is actually quite tricky for a lot of people. So that's kind of why I'm making this video to help aid in that, um, to make this make more sense. And so far I have 100% success rate doing it the way that I'm about to show you guys. But on these young one-year-old seedlings, they're very thin. The growth is very thin. And doing a cleft graft on this is uh, a bit challenging. So for me, a lot of these seedlings are going to have to grow out for a whole other year. And then from there, uh, this time next year, we're going to have to do the grafting and the points I want to make here before I go over and show you guys the demo and bring you guys over to the graph that we're going to do, um, I want to mention that timing is basically everything with this. Um, a lot of this growth that's already come out, this may even be too late on this particular seedling here. So what we want is really for these buds to just start swelling. I think this is the perfect time. Um, when you see the swelling happening, this is a really good time to get that scion on the rootstock. Um, additionally, not only is the timing extremely important, it is really with all grafts, but also taking out, that taking out that lower growth at a certain point is going to be key. So we'll mention that in just a minute, but let's show you guys this graft here that we did about a week ago. And we put this on here, and pretty soon I'm going to be pretty comfortable that this is going to be taken. And these lower points here, these lower buds, are going to actually start leafing out. And if that happens before this starts to leaf out, we're going to have to take these off at a certain point. If I'm comfortable that this is taken, the lower growth here is really going to suppress and stop the growth from the bud that we want. So uh, it's really important to do those two things, the timing and also getting out that lower growth, I think is immensely important. So I'm going to put you guys down now and show you guys the cleft graft. This really, though, is not much, many, it's not really any different than your typical cleft graft. So, um, you know, if you know what you're doing with the cleft, then this part of the video really is not going to help you. But I think the timing, and like I said, taking off that lower that lower growth is extremely, extremely important about two or three weeks after you put the graft on. So I'm going to come in here and just cut this down at a lower point. Um, I've also thought about grafting this into the root, into the tap root itself. This is still um, the actual wood up here, but I have a feeling you can also graft down way down here and graft onto... Um, the tap root. That'd be pretty cool. At least a nice experiment to try. And I'm just getting my sign on here. Sorry, guys. And we're just going to shave this down real nice and neat. Nothing crazy. Again, this is your typical cleft graft. I know I'm going to get some comments on my knife, but I don't really care. Also, you could do this if you were really good and, you know, one or two slices, but I find that this wood is so thin and easy to break that it's probably not a good idea to do that. But you can already see here, I made a mistake not taking my time, and that's a nice little error there. Which, in the end, I would have been much better off just taking my time, making less or more cuts, and I would have been better off. But here we go. We'll make the cut into the rootstock here. We're going to insert this in, and I'm going to put this on a nice little angle, make sure that the KBM is touching on both sides. To me, that's the most important part, and uh, you could have a graft that's a bit weak down the road, but uh, definitely supporting this with a rubber band now, tree tube later in the season, and then maybe even a stake next year. So I think this is all really important for any graft, no matter how perfect your graft was and how perfect it healed, uh, I think it's just immensely important especially for the first year or two, is just staking that. So then we'll take off the excess of the rubber band, come in here with the parafilm. Covering the top of the scion, you know, you don't want this to dry out. This is going to be on here for about three weeks before this bud actually comes out. Then, uh, yeah, you want to definitely protect this. And that's, that's it, you know? So those are my key points there. Those are my pieces of advice. Um, like I said, this guy over here, we did roughly about five days ago. Um, so because of that, 
pretty soon the sky from a lower point is going to start leafing out. This may even start leafing out at the right time. But if for whatever reason this takes a bit longer to take, which I'm expecting it to, these buds here are going to leaf out and we're going to eventually have to take those off to get the energy to the higher point on the tree. Um, and yeah, just timing is everything. You can already see everything in the yard is already leafed out. The temperatures are good here. We're in the 70s pretty consistently here in the day, 50s at night. And you can see this persimmon here that's a year old now. Um, we're actually two years old now. We cut it back down at a lower point. And now it's leafing out really well. And that's what's just going to happen in this area here. We're grafting a variety called Sejo, another Asian persimmon. And uh, yeah, really recommend getting that variety. Uh, also, stay tuned. If you guys like persimmons, we're going to talk a lot about my trees to come in terms of what the trees look like. Also, we're going to do plenty of tastings down the road because we should have a lot of fruit this year off my persimmon tree. So stay tuned. I'll talk to you all later. Take care, everyone.